What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Be Is For Build. In today's episode, we're finally jumping into carbon fiber. I'm really excited for this, but I'm also very nervous. The game plan is to basically build our other Huracan with an entire carbon fiber body. So we need to start learning how to work with it. We gotta start developing some techniques for duplicating these body parts we have out of carbon fiber. So in today's episode, we're jumping into everything for the first time, and we're gonna try and create a copy of our Lamborghini Huracan hood out of carbon fiber. This is gonna be really fun, this is gonna be a learning experience. Cross your fingers for us, and let's see how this goes. Stay tuned. Before we get down to work, I wanna take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Armor All. Now you guys know Armor All for their awesome lines of protectants and cleaners, but they also have a great line of air fresheners. You can personalize your drive with Armor All's Fresh FX Car Air Fresheners. They come in a variety of different fragrances, and this one is the uh, Cherry Blast, and it smells fantastic. And if you have a stubborn odor in your car, their Rapid Odor Eliminator comes in New Car, Twilight Mist, and Tranquil Skies Scent. Now my Huracan is pretty much a brand new car, but it doesn't smell as New Car Scent as it should. So we're gonna go use the New Car Scent Rapid Odor Eliminator on it right now. It's actually pretty cool technology and an application method on how it works, and it works really well. Armor All has a video on their website about how to use it, and I'm gonna link that in the description below. It smells good, it smells new car-y. I like it. And if you're a smoker or you have a stubborn smoke smell in your vehicle, they have a Smoke X line that has a similar odor eliminator product as well as a aerosol and a vent clip for everyday use. So guys, go check out Armor All right now. There is a link in the description. They have an awesome line of air fresheners. Hit the link in the description. Huge thanks to Armor All for sponsoring this episode. Now let's get down to work. First off, let me preface this by saying, Kyle and I have no experience working with carbon fiber, and I've talked with carbon fiber experts in the industry, and we've had a huge varied response and feedback, all the way from a lot of people in the industry saying, this is impossible, you're not gonna get good results trying to do what you're trying to do, all the way to, eh, I've done this before, and you can pull it off too. So we're gonna, I mean, I'm hoping we're gonna land somewhere in the middle, but we really have no idea. So this is gonna be a learning experience, and there's also multiple different methods, and we're gonna have to use different methods for different pieces too, depending on how they are and where they fit. But there's a lot of different methods to try and do this. So we're starting with one uh, that I'll explain in a little bit that I think is, is a good solid place to start. And then we're gonna have to keep trying other things as well if we don't get the results we're looking for. So this, this is gonna be fun. For anybody that's just joining us and maybe not fully up to date with the build and the build plan and everything else like that, this is our green Lamborghini Huracan that was crashed and we rebuilt it over the last few months. For the sole purpose, the reason that we built this car is so we could go body part by body part, taking them off the green car and recreating them out of carbon fiber while modifying them along the way, which we'll show you a little bit later. So um, that's why this car exists. Once we're doing that, that, this car should get sold. And then the body parts come off of this and are the ones that are, you know, the carbon ones that we create and then they go onto our LS swapped Huracan in the other shop. So that's the game plan. The first piece that I think will be a great one to start on is nice. It's a relatively small size relatively and uh, and it's kind of flat so I think it'll be a good a good shot to learn on is the hood so we're gonna go ahead and pop this thing open and take the hood off of the Huracan We got the hood off the Huracan. We were really careful to run all the uh, the wiper plumbing back out the right way and, and all the wires and everything, so that's all good. And now we have a nice little hood. We need to do some serious cleanup on that thing. So we're gonna go ahead and clean it very first. And once it's nice and clean, we gotta do a waxing with partle paste. We just got the part cleaned up and next step is partle paste. And we'll show you that in a second. I've been just watching it and doing a refresher course. Street Banditos are the guys that kind of taught me this method. Like I said, we're gonna use a lot of different methods on this car. I'm calling this one Bandito Light. We're changing it from how they do it just a little bit. Um, but I'll put a link to their channel in the description. They're great guys. They got a lot of really good quality content, especially about carbon fiber. So this method is following kind of their prescribed method. So we're gonna do partle paste now. Um, this is a wax that uh, makes your part nice and smooth and shiny so you have a good base and then it also helps with uh, removal of other stuff. So you do three coats of this wax. You know, wax on, wax off, rinse, repeat, but no rinsing, just repeat that three times. All right, our 
hood is all waxed up, so it's ready for the next step. Now the next step is a PVA release film. This is pretty cool. It's real thin material. It's kind of like, it's almost water like thickness. You put this in a paint gun with a nice fluid tip. You can like brush on or other things, but uh, people recommend using a paint gun. We got plenty of those around. And then you spray this on. We're gonna spray it on everywhere that you think you might get resin or anything else like that. And then it dries down to almost like a, a saran wrap texture over your entire part. And it's also water soluble. So if once your part's on there, if, if you're having trouble getting that release film off, you can like spray water in around it and like that and introduce water and it will just melt away. So it's really cool stuff. It's gonna help us from damaging our part at all. We like, we won't get resin sticking to our part or anything else like that. Um, and and uh, well, I shouldn't tell you too much about it cause I've never used it, but it seems like really cool technology. So we're gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna load up a paint gun full of it and we're gonna spray a nice even coat on there and then we gotta let it dry for 30 minutes. Well, definitely not off to a good start. So uh, the PVA uh, film, like it, it just was beating up like crazy. When I was spraying it on, it had this type of texture to it. It was really, really bad and it just didn't work. So you can see what it looks like when you peel it up. Like I said, it's kind of just like a little piece of plastic almost. So um, I read online and lots of people have had different problems with reactions and, and different things like that. And there's different techniques uh, to solve this stuff as well. But you can see that the beating up caused it to have actual voids. It wasn't just even an uneven surface. I mean, it's got entire voids in it. So this is something that we got to solve because we need to be able to do this real quick and do it a lot on every single part that we're going to be working with. So it's time to uh, it's time to experiment with some different techniques, maybe a different spraying gun, some stuff like that. So I'm gonna get this off, clean this piece up, and uh, give it another try with a different technique. Hey, we did it, we made it work. So I'm really hesitant to give advice just cause I made it work one time, but I'm gonna tell you what I did in case you're following this method at home. What I did was I turned my, uh, we used a conventional uh, air gun with an air hose and like an air compressor. You could use like a detailing gun from Harbor Freight or anything like that. We use really uh, high air pressure and then I turned my nozzle down so it was just you know, coming out real lightly. We also diluted it a tiny bit, but um, so it's coming out real lightly. And I did what I would call just like a mist coat over this whole thing and it matted it up. It looked, this whole thing looked like it had a matte finish. And then I came in, like I would spray a clear coat basically and came over and did the whole thing after that matte kind of tacked up a little bit. Um, and that's a technique that people use, but I think the real reason, the real reason that we had the problems in the first place was that Kyle and I did not buff out the wax well enough. So wax on, wax off. We didn't do the second step well enough, I think. And we had too much wax living on this item. And then when you spray any liquid on a wax, you get something that looked like what we had. So that's what I'm thinking it is. But anyways, now we got this really beautiful coat. I mean, as you get like, you could see the light bounce off of it. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty damn cool. We could spray this on cars to protect them, except it is water soluble. So in the rain, it'd get really weird. Anyways, now what we gotta do is this is dried up the right amount. Now we're gonna lay our first layer of resin. So we're using the fiberglass resin. This is a quicker um, drying resin. It's their 2000 system. And this is like, uh, this, is, this is what people use for carbon fiber. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get a layer of resin on the whole item here. Nice even layer of resin. And then we have to wait for it to tack up before we can lay our cloth into it. is so cool to do you guys so so this is now has a layer of resin over it and you can see it's doing it's like self leveling thing so the resin like levels out to be pretty nice and pretty pretty glassy and it looks looks really nice so we got this huge layer of resin over it now and that's a 20 minute tack up time and once that tacks we're gonna go ahead and lay our cloth 
So this is our roll of our carbon fiber cloth. It's a uh, 3K 2x2 two two, uh, twill weave. That's basically your, your classic carbon fiber look. The biggest thing to, to reference with this is anytime you're working with dry carbon, it can, it, it, like if you're cutting carbon, or if it's dry, like what we're about to do right now, unroll it and cut it, you need to be wearing respirators. So you're gonna see Kyle and I wearing uh, respirators for lung protection and stuff like that. So next thing we gotta do is we're doing one layer. We're just doing one on this. And that's why I'm calling it the bandito light method because we're actually gonna do one on the top and then actually reinforce it from the bottom. And I'll explain why once we do it. So we're gonna go ahead and measure this piece right now. And we have, uh, based on my watch, we've got five minutes to cut our piece and have it ready to lay down as soon as this is tacked up. Doesn't that look awesome? Now we gotta work really fast, so I can't talk much, but what we gotta do now is kind of flatten our weave out while it meets up with our resin. So you're gonna work from the inside out Get all the creases in and then get it sunk into the indentations. You can see where Kyle's already started working on his over there. We're gonna use a roller and some squeegees. And then right after this is done, we got the, we got the fabric all looking nice. We're gonna go ahead and uh, mix up another layer of resin and throw it on here. All right guys, it's a new day and this should look a little bit thicker than we left you. So we put resin on here and then off camera, Kyle threw another layer of resin on here and we gave it plenty of time to dry. So this is all dried up. It's looking really, really good, but you can see as we bounce the light off of it, it's got a couple little bumps and lumps and stuff like that. So that leads us to the next part of this process, which is sanding this surface smooth. We're gonna sand this resin surface smooth. That's why we did a good build up so we can take some off and get this thing nice and uh, nice and the, the shape that we want it. This is the time that we're gonna shape it down to exactly how we want it to look. So we're gonna start sanding this. We're gonna use 120 grit sandpaper. I've been told that we could even use 80 if we want. So we'll just see how much comes off when we get into it and see how it goes and we'll, we'll adjust as we go. All right, there we go. We got to sand it up pretty close to flat and Kyle and I just uh, wiped it down with a wax and grease remover. Now it looks, it looks pretty rough right now and we did have a bit of an issue where some of this resin wasn't completely cured even though we had given it two days to dry. So that's a bit concerning. And, and I don't know, I mean, we put, some, we put some scratch marks into this with the sanding that almost looks like a bit of like, like a fog. And uh, I've been told that this stuff will just kind of disappear when we clear over it, but I don't have super high hopes, but that's why we're doing this experiment. That's why we're working on this. We're learning through these things. So we're gonna find out, we're gonna learn by doing. Uh, so the next thing that we gotta do is we're gonna go ahead and flip this thing over. We're gonna make our cut line where exactly where our hood is supposed to be, the size that we need it to be. And then we're gonna go ahead and try and delaminate the hood, um, well, the carbon fiber hood from the uh, traditional hood underneath. All right, so we got our carbon hood pulled off of our other hood and um, it, it looks good. It looks fantastic from, uh, from the inside. This is the inside. It's got a little bit of residue um, still on it from where our uh, PVA was on it. Uh, and I actually didn't need to mark a line because you can just see real, like real clearly where the gel is and everything like that. So that, that's pretty cool. Now, we actually did just, just now kind of figure out that this method that we were gonna try 
uh, isn't going to work out. So I was calling this the Bandito Light method because what the Street Banditos did is they take three to four layers of carbon fiber and when they lay the first one up and then when that one is tacked up they go after the next one, next one, next one and they get four layers of carbon on. Now that's going to that's gonna you know have some buildup around the edges uh, that uh, is going to make your panel a little bit wider which you know we knew about and we were, we're not too worried about that. You can just make the whole car three millimeters wider it's not a big deal. But what we we're gonna try and do to, we, we thought we had this real trick method that we were gonna try and do to kind of reduce that amount is lay the one outer layer and then basically come in once that's done and lay the inner layers and, and reinforce from the backside, meaning you wouldn't make your panel bigger and bigger and bigger with every level. The problem with that is, is that this panel came out, it's so flimsy that we can't, we can't reinforce this right now because if we reinforce it, it's like what shape are we reinforcing? Just setting it down, just the gravity and its own weight is uh is kind of changing its shape so that's the learning that's the learning part and and we learned that now and now we know that so moving forward we can try it differently um this looks i mean this just looks really really good that's very similar to what it would be if we made a mold so um you know it's possible that maybe just making a mold of each part is what we need to do and then the upside of that is if we ever want to make a carbon fiber part uh, another lamborghini carbon fiber part uh, we can just crank it back out. So, you know, maybe maybe that's what we will do. I'm not 100% sure at this point, but we got more learning to do. So the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to come through here. And uh, since we know that this thing is, you know, it's not trash, It's it definitely could be utilized for something here or there or whatever, uh, but it's, I, I'm, I'm gonna kind of quickly do this now. I'm gonna take the uh, cutoff wheel, I'm gonna cut through. Uh, remember, respirator when you're cutting carbon fiber. Anyways, I'm gonna cut through on this line right here, getting us our hood shape, and then we're gonna go ahead and clear coat it to see how this surface turns out. We got the hood cut out, we got it all reinforced, so we're ready to go ahead and spray our clear. Now, we're not using just a standard automotive clear here. I mean, you could, but they have better options. So they have this one that sprays on a lot more thick. It's got a lot more self-leveling uh, properties to it, uh, and it's got some really, really great UV protectant as well. So that's what we're gonna be using today. It's super thick though, so it's gonna spray out of a 2.5 millimeter uh, fluid tip, and we're gonna be using a gel coat spray gun rather than your just standard like automotive spray gun. Those would normally spray like 1.3 millimeter fluid tip, so you could tell we're we're over doubling or, or almost doubling the size of the tip on the gun. So we're gonna do one coat, it's a light mist, and then let that kind of tack up a little bit, get a little bit of grip for this stuff coming up next, and then two to three wet coats after that until we kind of achieve the desired thickness. Or, or if this goes wrong and we are not kind of covering up our sand marks, if there's something that, you know, where it's just not gonna look right, then we'll probably bail out after the first coat. But we're, we're gonna give it a try, this is a learning process, and we'll see how it goes. Clear is on, so let's check it out and see how it looks. Overall, the clear's got a really nice finish and we have good depth and a good level of gloss, so that's good. Now, the problems with the panel are obviously we didn't have enough layers, we've already talked about that. Um, we had some fogging right here where this kind of fogged up and got a little bit of weird whiteness to it. That happened at the first layer of resin. We, we threw the roller over a little bit of resin like way too late in the game and it, and it made that. And I think we had some of that happen over here too. But then we also got something that looks really similar while we were sanding. So I think what happened is when we went to sand um, we the resin wasn't totally dried up enough and instead of kind of sanding stuff off we kind of gunked it up and we kind of like infused what was left of the resin with some like sanded dust crap I think that's what it was um, so that that was not cured by spraying clear coat over it it didn't kind of clear up or anything like that so you got some pretty bad fogginess in a couple little spots but we got some really nice clean spots too so I think the clear is really good that went on nicely and that, that was pretty cool stuff um, so overall, the panel, the, the learnings that we had from this are um, obviously more layers need to be done and, um, and then we need to really make sure that our resin has time to totally, to totally like harden up and be totally hard before we go into the sanding phase. 
So it looks pretty weak with its all, it has with no support, but let's go ahead and pull the Huracan back in and lay this on top of the Huracan hood and see how it would have looked. So yes, we messed up on this panel, but this has got to be inspiring. This is, this is exciting to see it looking like this. This is very, very cool. Uh, I'm seeing a couple other things. We need to work a little bit better on our edges, making sure that they're a little bit cleaner, a little bit better looking. And now that I'm looking back at this gel coat too though. So one thing I did want to say also, you can see how there's kind of bumps reflecting off back there. We got some water in the lines because we can't use our awesome turbine spraying system because it doesn't uh, have the air pressure for this stuff. Up front though is where I did it the right way but you could still see a few imperfections. And if you had stuff like this on a clear, you could wet sand and buff it out, but I'm not sure if you can do that on this stuff. So I, I got some questions about that and I'm gonna talk to the Street Banditos and see um, if, uh, if maybe we should just use a standard automotive clear after we've kind of smoothed out our resin to the level that we want it. I'm just a lot more familiar with working with that stuff. But overall, this is very exciting to see because this looks really cool. We got the contour, we got the shape and everything. Uh, so this is really cool. Let us know in the comments below what you want to see us try and make next. By default, we might just make another hood, but that might get boring. So let us know, and uh, we're going to keep learning, keep evolving, keep figuring out this process, and uh, hopefully the next piece we make will be a keeper. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, I want to let you guys know that we have a merch drop coming very, very soon. And anybody that is a Patreon supporter or a YouTube member is going to get a special discount code uh, to get the merch much, like, have very heavily discounted. So I just want to let you guys know that. It's all available if you want to help out and support the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Peace!